Hello ladies and gentlemen and in today's video we're going to take the portrait that we took last week and we're going to turn it into a Halloween style portrait. I'll see you after this. You know it's been an awfully long time since I've made a video like this but here we are. I've got, um, I'm actually using my X-T3 to film this which is a little bit overkill. I could have used the webcam but something screwy has gone wrong with my webcam. So anyway, without further ado, because I mean, obviously there's been a, a little bit of do before we started. Uh, let's take a look at what we're going to be doing today. We have got uh, this picture, uh, which I will have to remember to superimpose over this bit of video. I keep forgetting when I do that. But this picture of, of, of me, uh, which I used for my Halloween avatar uh, last week at the time of, of recording, um, I'm going to show you how I got from just taking the picture, which is what we did last week, to putting it into Photoshop and actually getting all of that working. Okay, without further ado then, let's switch over to Photoshop. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop, and um, I haven't done a Photoshop video for a long time, or a, a Lightroom or processing video for a long time. So um, if, if I seem to be glancing at an odd place it's because I'm looking at the instructions that I've just uh, relate to myself so uh, originally the first thing I did on this was to put it in Lightroom I've done some very basic adjustments just to get it from raw file to uh, to this file which is all right I mean it's not brilliant I did know you know when when we took it last week I thought it was all nice and sharp and when I uh, zoom in on this if I can zoom in on this there we go uh, you'll see it's actually it's a little bit out of focus so one of the first things that I'm going to want to do is to sort of deal with that and we can deal with that a little bit in not in uh, Photoshop although I think it would work in Photoshop but actually in Luminar um, okay so the first thing I'm going to do is duplicate that layer and the reason I wanted a copy of this is because if something goes horribly wrong we can always go back to our original image um, right uh, then we want to cut that image out I do want to do Luminar first. I think I'm going to do Luminar 4 first. So um, we go up to Filter up here, and you can open up uh, Luminar as a, as a filter, um, which I prefer doing. Oh, before we do that, I'm going to right-click on this, and I have to convert that to a smart object. And then uh, that means that I can always go back into Luminar and make those changes again later on if I if I want to. So this will take a, a few, well, probably take a better minute or so to load up, because there's a lot of things going on on my computer at the moment, not least the fact that I'm recording the screen, and I've got Photoshop open, and I'll have Luminar open. So so um, I will see you in uh, just after that. We'll cut this little section out so that it's not quite as boring for you. Okay, here we are in Luminar, uh, nice and simple. We're not going to do an awful lot in here, but we're going to do little bits and bobs. First of all, there is no reason why we don't do a little bit of AI enhancing. It tends to be fairly good. Uh, it's a bit too much, but maybe there, maybe? That's good. Uh, we'll add in a little bit of structure as well. This structure is going to help it uh, to uh, to sh look a, a bit sharper. Um, it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be acceptable, especially acceptable for, for what is essentially a, a, a profile picture I use for a couple of days and then, and then that's it. Ideally, you want to get it sharp in the camera. Now, after making this video, um, Fujifilm actually did release their update 4 which has changed the way that the, um, the focusing is working, the autofocus is working. So I need to try this again with this lens, same lens as I'm using right now, uh, and to see if it's a bit sharper. Certainly for video, it seems to be, you know, continuous. It seems to be moving around on, on my face. Uh, so we need to sort of go a little bit further on that. Uh, details is the next thing. So details enhancer, this is where all of the magic happens. Uh, we are going to put this up. Uh, probably to about 20. Uh, we're going to put the medium details up to probably about 30. There you go. And all of a sudden you can see that's a lot sharper. Again, not perfect, but acceptable for what we're doing right now. Um, I, again, ideally, I would have liked this to have been just sharper still. So I'm going to add a little bit of sharpening on this as well. Um, and it'll just get us to a point where I think when we lay all the other stuff over the top, it's going to look perfectly fine. 
Okay. Uh, whilst we're here, we might do. We might as well do a little bit more. We are going to go into the uh, portrait mode over here. Oh, I tell you what, actually, I quite like doing this with um, uh, with, with portraits. I, I haven't done it very much, but I did do it with a, a portrait the other day, and it looked quite uh, quite nice. Uh, so let's put this up. Okay, I think that's that's. It's very subtle. I don't even know if you'll see it on the video. It's very subtle, but it does give a little bit of a, a an, an edge to uh, some of the colouring on that, which is what I wanted. Um, okay, back into this thing, and this is why I love Luminar. Really, it makes a lot of things very simple. So we'll go into the Skin Enhancer to start off with. Uh, we're going to take off uh, Defect Removal, uh, put on Defect Removal. Sorry, uh, the amount that we're going to put this up. Um, and like I said, I've got all my notes down here, so I can uh, go through exactly what we did. Uh, is 15 there? Okay, so that should be enhancing the skin a little bit. And we're going to remove a little bit of shine. We don't want to go too far with that one, because the shine that we've got on this is kind of bits up here as well. And actually, we want to keep some of that, because that's the light that we put in when we actually took the thing in the first place. So we do want that to be in there. OK, that's looking good. Um, and you'll notice that we've got some catch lights in my eyes, so I'm happy with that. We are going, however, to go into the AI Portrait Enhancer, and we'll do a couple of things in here. Um, I don't want to push this. You could push up the face light on there, but like you said, we've, we've got a relatively balanced picture, so we don't need to do an awful lot of stuff like that. Uh, we are going to put the eye whitening up, because we want to have white eyes. Um, and we are going to put up the enhancement up. I just want to enhance those all the way. You can see what that's doing. If I take those down like that and take them back up again, you can see it's brightening them up a little bit. It's just allowing a little bit of color in there. And that's going to be uh, useful later on. One of those eyes is going to go completely. The other one, we're going to turn green, um, and that'll that'll help. That eye enhancement's going to help when we do that. Um, I don't. I'm not going to worry about dark circles under my eyes because it's a horror picture, so it's not. It should be kind of a bit odd, a bit weird like that. Uh, but I am going to put the eyebrows up. Uh, where have we got? Um, improve eyebrows. We'll do that all the way. Because because I've got very light eyebrows, doing that is going to add a lot more. Um, uh, blackness. It's going, to, it's going to darken them down an awful lot. And that's good for me because, again, horror picture. So we want a lot of uh, detail in that so that they start to, to come through a little bit. Okay. Um, lips. Are we going to do some lip darkening as well? You don't want a, a, a lot, but a lot of these lips are going to go away completely when we, when we bring the skull in. And we don't want the lip to come through. That's the important thing on this. Okay, so that is it I think um, and uh, I'm going to click on apply at this point and this is what I like to use Luminar for we've not done a lot of major editing on this I could do stuff like slimming the face so I could do this um, which would help when we get the, the the skull on but I don't want to do it in Luminar I want to do that in um, in Photoshop because when we put the skull on I want to I want to use liquify and be a lot closer to the original image so we are going to take that and uh, apply it that's going to take us back into Photoshop I'm not going to make you sit and watch uh, the process to do that so I'll see you again in just a second when we're actually back in Photoshop Okay, so back in Photoshop, and what I'm going to do is, at this point, if I then start making changes to this, because it's got a smart filter on it, every change I make, it's going to then open up Luminar, and I'll have to go through a whole process of doing that. I don't want to do that. All of my base changes that I'm, I've got there, I'm happy with. So I'm going to press Shift, Control, Alt, and E, and that's going to merge all of these layers together, so I can turn off... Uh, these bottom two layers now. Um, and uh, we've just got this top layer that we're going to be working with right now. So the first thing we want to do is we want to change uh, the eye here. Like I said, we want this to be green. So I'm going to use, uh, go into Adjustments, and we're going to go into Hue and Saturation. Uh, we do want to change the hue. Uh, we want this to be green, don't we? So something like that. So that's very green. Um, 
the saturation, I want to take that down an awful lot because whilst it's whilst we want it to be green, we don't want it to be very green. We want it to look like an eye still. Uh, so we'll take that down. Uh, where are we? Are we? That might be a bit too much. We'll leave it like that for the time being. I might have to change that. Um, and I want to just push the light up a little bit on this as well. Not much. You see that that change between zero and one is just it. It's very subtle, but it's just enough. Now I'm looking at this eye here because that's the eye that we're going to be keeping. Okay. Uh, so now we've done that. I'm going to go into the. Uh, I've clicked the wrong button. Go into this layer mask here, and we're going to paint. Uh, everything black to start off with, so I'm using the paint bucket there and I've changed black on here. We'll do that uh, to get everything black. I'm going to select our uh, magnifying glass and zoom in here. Then I'm going to take the uh, paintbrush, uh, press X and it will shift this over from uh, black to white again and we are just going to paint that in. So all we're doing now at this point is adding in the hue and saturation just in to that one thing and that's all we need to do. Uh, control zero will bring everything uh, back up again and we have got our green eye which I quite like. Okay so the next thing we would have to do is add a skull and what I did was download a skull from Pixabay. Uh, now I know a lot of people will say oh, well I don't want to do that I want to get you know my own pictures from wherever it is that's perfectly fine uh, there's no reason why you shouldn't use your own pictures when you're doing this that's absolutely fine so we're going to grab our skull uh, and I'm going to move it into here like this uh, and so there's our skull uh, and we'll come back to that in a minute I will double click that uh, to do this uh, because there is something I completely forgotten to do but it is kind of important now at the moment you can still maybe you can't see it on here but you can still see uh, if I add a, a brightness and contrast to this for a second, um, which we can get a, a, a rid of in a second. Okay, if I push the brightness up, you can still see some of the background that we've got there, and we really want that um, that taken out. Uh, so what I'll do is uh, select the subject on here, and to do that, I'm just going to uh, go into our quick selection tool and then select subject. It should make a relatively good job of doing this because it has done in the past. So, uh, well, yeah, with any luck, that, that's pretty good, I, w I would say. Uh, it's missed a little bit off around here, uh, but that's okay because we're going to uh, do something with that. Uh, we're going to, we want to go into Select and Mask at this point, and we want to use the, these different brushes. So I'll, I'll use this brush, for example, uh, to uh, paint out or to paint in uh, the various different areas. And this doesn't need to be perfect, but it needs to be good enough. And I, I think a lot of, of photo editing needs to be kind of good enough. Um, but we all ex we always expect it to be perfect, and it very rarely is. So the, the because we were using a 2.8 lens, there is blur here uh, that there isn't over here, for example. Um, so that's why creating something like this corner bit is a bit difficult this should this whole shoulder uh, it could be a bit of a problem because we've because it's all blurred but if I have a problem with that I can I can simply bring this in and literally just paint in where I think it needs to be in fact if I can I can increase this Oop, wrong button and it will give it more of a feather which I quite like when you've got a blurry subject having that as more of a feather is not a bad thing um, uh, we will paint this down here and here, like so. And uh, we're also going to go around the rest of the face. Now, I'm quite happy with the way that that's cut out. I spent a little bit longer on it when I was doing uh, doing this properly, but that, to me, is fine. Um, and uh, this is going to give us a selection, uh, but I don't want to do that. I'm going to click on uh, Decontaminate Colors. That's just going to help a little bit uh, along the edges, and that's going to uh, export with a new layer and a layer mask. So we'll click on OK at that point, and then uh, Control-0, and that's what we've got. OK, so underneath that, um, now we've still got our green eye in there and if I click on hue and saturation and then click on this 
uh, thing here, uh, that's going to link that layer to the layer that's underneath. So we're going to make another layer underneath that. We're going to take our paint bucket again and we're just going to fill it with black. Um, and that is what our picture is looking like at the moment. Pretty pleased with that. I think that's going quite well. Let me just get uh, this lead out of the way. OK. Um, Right, we've changed the eye colour, we've added the skull, we want to add the skull into here, which is this, and now we have to reposition the skull, so we're going to change the opacity, so you can see me and the skull at the same time. We're going to go to Edit and Free Transform, um, and then we will take that skull and shift it around until we want something like this. We want it to be slightly on its edge as well, because the face is slightly on its edge bit like that. This isn't always the easiest um, thing to do. And maybe actually stretch this a little bit here as well so that this top bit here is lining up. This is a bit better. This is a bit better. There we go. We want, it, we want it to line up as much as possible. And this isn't going to look quite the same as um, as it did when I actually made the uh, the original skull, uh, because I'm actually I'm not playing with this as, as nearly as much as I did with the original skull. Uh, but that's fine. That's all right. You can always have these kind of little differences. I want to just get this. Uh, here's a little tip. If you want to make really subtle adjustments on this, you can use the arrow keys, and that does a really good job. And you can see here, actually, where we We've got the lip in here. This is where we uh, said before this might be a bit of a problem, but there we go. I think that's done it. Right, we'll change our opacity back to 100, and now we're going to have to overlay that on top of my face using a blend mode. And the blend mode that we usually use on things like this is multiply. Uh, so there it is. Well, okay, that doesn't quite look as good as I was hoping it would do. Uh, I think if I bring this down here, uh, and then perhaps we... Mm. Okay, we're going to need to make a few adjustments to this as well. Quite, uh, I mean, apart from anything else, the, uh, the, the, the... How have I done this now? That's better. There we go. Okay, um, so apart from anything else, I need to... Um, I need to change the colour of this skull a little bit because it's not quite working for me. And again, I'm going to do that with a hue and saturation brush. Uh, so uh, we are going to do... Uh, right, we need to change the hue of that a little bit. Not a lot, just a little bit. And then we're going to change the saturation on that as well. And it's actually it's the saturation that's going to make the biggest difference here. Uh, so we want... I want to go, yeah, I do, I do. Okay, we're going to start off with that. Um, and now we want to put a layer mask on this as well. So we click on that skull layer, layer, layer mask, reveal all. Um, and we are largely going to paint all of this out as well. Okay, uh, so get our paint brush and remember if it's white, it's painting it in. If we press the X now and it's black, we're painting it out. So I'm really, I'm just going to paint this whole skull out, apart from this little top bit there. And then I'm going to make a smaller brush and we're going to start to paint this in. So what I want here is, you see where this shadow is here? I want the skull to kind of line up with that. So what we might have to do uh, is just go back into sort of moving it around. And just there you go. You see, that's a little bit better. That's a little bit better than where it was before because we've got this nice uh, nose over there. That, that was what, what, what I was uh, aiming for. Okay, back onto this and we're going to start painting things in again. Uh, I'm going to take out this eye completely. You'll see how we're doing that in a, in a bit. And then we've got this um, face here. There we go. Uh, and this is where liquify is going to start to come in again so we will take the rest of that the rest of that's going pretty well the problem that we have right now if i do that the problem that we have right now is this bit here 
which kind of needs to follow uh, the skull around here, but it's not going to. So uh, let's make this a little bit smaller. We want to do this with it. Okay. And then we're going to have to change the uh, my face. We're going to have to liquefy my face so that it's it's smaller, so that this bit that's here is not part of everything else. Now, now that we can see this a little bit better, I can also go into here a bit and take away some of that colouring. So let's just do this. That's better. That's better. Uh, and take away some of that colouring so that the, so that it, it matches in uh, with the face a bit more. Um, which at this point, actually, I'm quite happy with. I quite like that. Okay, so what are we going to have to do here is we're going to have to use the liquify tool. Um, so again, uh, well, we'll right click on that and we will convert it to a smart object. Because again, if I change my mind, I want to be able to go back into it later on. Uh, once it's converted into a smart object, we're going to go up to filter and uh, liquify, which is here. And what we should be able to do is to be able to change the face look from where it is to make it closer to what we what we want. The problem, okay, this isn't always gonna. It's not always great. It doesn't always give you the the best results. So what I'm going to do here is just shift some of this inside there. We want my face now at this point to follow the contours of that. So I think, think, that's just about right. We'll, um, we'll okay that and we'll see what it does. Okay, okay, so it cuts me off completely, that's brilliant. Okay, so now we can take our uh, thing again and we can start to paint this back in. And then paint out where we have it here for for this. Okay, so that is me as a skull. You can see a lot of that is working quite well. Right now, though, we've got one problem here: is we can see the eye under here. We don't want to see the eye under there. So again, um, layer mask, layer, layer mask, reveal all, uh, and we're going to go in with the brush uh, and black, isn't it? And we're going to paint out that eye so that you don't have anything in the eye socket. I think that's right. One of the problems with doing this with the cameras on and the lights on is that I can't always see the screen as well as I'd like to. But to me, that looks about right. Just about right. Um, I think we'll... I just want to play around with this skull a little bit and with the mask that we've got on this skull, really to see if there's anything else that I can start to bring in here. Oh, that's the wrong button. Uh, I don't think there is, but it's worth just sort of trying it. That is the edge of the proper skull look. We want perhaps this to be a little bit more of a kind of a blend. because that is my actual face. There we go, that's a little bit better. Okay, that's not bad. I'm quite happy with where we are at the moment. We're nearly done. I think. Um, okay, so we have got with that. We've uh, we've got another texture that we wanted to put on this as well. I've got this bark texture that looks quite nice, uh, and we're going to use this as uh, so. We're going to edit and free transform again. Shouldn't have taken it out of free transform. Really, we'll stick this over the face, and we're going to use. Uh, is it overlay on this? I think. I think it's overlay, and you see what it does. With that now, you know, now that I'm looking at that, I think that's probably too much. But let's expand this quite a lot. Maybe not. 
maybe like that, and we'll, we'll use bits of it, because we don't want to have the whole thing uh, like that. We, we can sort of run it down a little bit. That's not bad. It's not too bad. Um, I think perhaps I'll try a different one. I'll try a different sort of wood. Uh, that might be better look, so we'll make this bigger. Overlay that on the face. Use overlay. And again, that's an awful lot, isn't it? Um, so I think at this point we, we will want to take the opacity down a little bit. Maybe shift the texture around here, perhaps. We don't need it over the whole face. Double tap that, and then we're going to go into a... Uh, where are we? A, a layer again. So layer, layer mask reveal all. Um, and then we're going to paint all of this out, like that. And we're going to bring in bits of that layer over the top, maybe just like this. And then again, we want to put a hue and saturation uh, on top of that. Uh, where, again, clicking on this is going to link it to the uh, layer underneath. Um, we want the saturation down an awful lot. Something like that, perhaps. Maybe change the lightness on it as well. Maybe... Okay, I think that th th we're getting better, actually. Maybe darken that down. Oh, that looks better. That looks better. Okay, so actually there's only one final thing that we have to do now. Okay, so actually there's only one final thing that we really have to do now. Uh, we could make this uh, a little bit different. We could add some texture into here to, to make it a little bit different. Um, we could add some... Um, brightness and contrast, sorry, into here like this. Uh, and we could um, do that and yes, do that as well. Uh, and we could uh, bump up our contrast like that, you see, and then pull the brightness down. And that does look an awful lot more like uh, that sort of skin effect that we were uh, we were trying to get. And of course, the changing the opacity of this will change how much of a, uh, an impact that has on the final thing. I think again maybe playing with the mask a bit here we don't want it to be too uh, messy but at the same time we we don't we want this rel relatively subtle we don't want to, to sort of take away from the fact that there's a, um, a face underneath this. I just want to add a bit of texture under here uh, and then paint some of that out so we've got we've got a little bit of texture we haven't got too much now and again this doesn't look quite like what I had before but it's close enough this is the same process that I went through uh, to get the final one finally uh, I think we're just going to add an adjustment on here hue and saturation uh, adjustment uh, we want to be a little bit more green uh, so I'm going to take that up a little bit until it is until the skin's a little bit greener uh, we're going to add in a little bit of saturation there and we want to take down some of the brightness. Okay, nearly there. We're nearly done. And one final thing. I just wanted to sort this bit out here. Uh, so I am going to put a brand new layer on. Uh, this is uh, should be fairly easy uh, to do. Paint bucket, everything black, which will take everything out. Um, and then that means that we can put in uh, our brushes wrong button, uh, press X, and then we can, oops, no, no, <laughs> layer mask reveal all. I'm trying to rush through this now. And then we can just start to paint our thing in, in, in here. And it means that what we can actually do on this corner is make a really big brush and then just start to paint it out like that so that it kind of fades uh, in into the background. And we might want to do that a little bit over over here as well because it's a horror thing and that's what horror things do uh perhaps this final hue and saturation we might want to make it a little bit uh lighter maybe that's that's all right i still i'm still not a hundred percent 
uh, happy with with that. Possibly the problems, the opacity there. But that's, that, that is a bit better. That is a bit better. Okay, and there we go. There I have. We we have it. A horror face that you can do yourself um, if you want to look gruesome at Christmas. I I, I don't know. But if you wanted to look gruesome a few weeks ago then this would have been absolutely perfect for you so maybe bookmark this come back next year if you want to do exactly the same thing and that's how he did it hope you've liked today's video if you have please click the like button and of course share this around with everybody that you know if you're brand new here then click on subscribe hit the little bell icon at the end and the all notifications pop up that comes up that's um, all I can really ask of you uh, thanks ever so much for coming along a um, little bit of a change because of course we're locked down so I can't go out and do as many trips uh, as, I, as I want to um, but hopefully uh, I'll, I'll be able to show you a few things in, in Photoshop this wasn't maybe the best one that I've ever done <laughs> it might, took a little bit of getting into the swing of things again but I hope you found some of it useful at least especially if you've never done this before and you want to give it, give it a shot until next time thank you very much for coming along and as always don't forget Keep taking those photos.